Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime, and today we've been asked to match each inequality below to its graph on the right. Um, so one of the topics that comes up on the GED that students find most challenging, I would say, uh, since I hang out a lot in um, GED chat rooms, I know exactly what you guys are complaining about, um, is inequalities. Inequalities really frustrate students. Um, and actually, as it turns out, they're not really that much harder than equations. So let's take a look. We're starting this subject, first of all, by just looking at inequalities on the number line. So let's see here. First of all, you need to know how to read it to understand inequalities, which are kind of like equations. They definitely have at least two expressions. But as where an equation has an equal sign between the two expressions, an inequality has uh, one of the inequality symbols. So there's four inequality symbols. We have the greater than symbol, the less than symbol, the greater than or equal to symbol, and the less than or equal to symbol. For students who struggle to remember these or students who just have a really third grade understanding of them, you know, I've heard that the um, alligator always eats the bigger number. That's useful in elementary school, but by the time we get to high school, we have to be able to read these because we're doing translation problems. So it's not enough to just know which direction they should point, you should be able to read them. So if you struggle, think of a number line. As it turns out, we get those inequality symbols from the either end of the number line. Think about this side here. Um, as you go left on a number line, your numbers get smaller and smaller, like negative one, negative two, so on and so forth. As you go off to the left, your numbers get less. And that, as it turns out, is your less than symbol. Think about the other way uh, that we point. We point off to the right on a number line. Our numbers are getting bigger. One, two, three, four, so on and so forth. When um, the number line end that points to the right gets greater. And indeed, that's what the greater than symbol looks like. It points off to the right. So again, if you're struggling with which one's the less than, which one's the greater than, draw a quick number line and you won't struggle anymore. Okay, now, so let's match each inequality below to the graph on the right. So this one, take a look at what it says. It says y. Now, I don't know what y is, but I know something about y. y has to be less than or equal to negative 3. Less than or equal to negative 3. So, first of all, I am going to expect a number line that has a point at negative 3. Now, I've got a couple of them. Like that one has a negative 3 and that one has a negative 3. But one thing I want you to notice is this little equal then sign. Do you see it underneath? That means y is less than or equal to negative 3. That means it's possible that um, negative 3 is a solution. Negative 3 is an answer. It's okay for us to be equal to negative 3. In, on a number line, when we want to say that that point is included, we use what's called a closed dot. So I'm expecting a closed dot on negative 3. Take a look at this one here. Do you see that nice closed dot? Um, uh, com uh, compare that to this one over here. That one's an open dot. Do you see how it's just a line and it's not colored in? Open dot. Okay, so that being said, all, what do I know about y? The only thing I know about y is it's something less than negative 3. And so what you see here is we have negative 3 graphed solid and then we go off to the left, the less than direction. Uh, and obviously there then, this is my graph for A. Cool. Now let's look at the next one. This one says M is greater than one half. Notice it's strictly greater than. I don't have the little line underneath to say greater or equal to. So I'm expecting an open dot at one half. Okay, so here we go. This guy has an open dot at one half. Now you might say, Kate, how am I supposed to know that's one half? Um, because it's halfway between zero and one. <laughs> one half means breaking each whole, you know, halves means breaking each whole thing into two equal pieces, and that's just one half right there. Okay, now we know that it's not only uh, one half that counts, it's all the numbers greater than one half. So I see my open dot, and I see me going off to the right here for all the numbers greater than one half. B is definitely three. So, of course, that only leaves C to be 1, but let me show you about this because this is the one that screws students up the most. Take a look at where R is. R is shoved between two different numbers, meaning R has a region, um, a starting point and a stopping point uh, for possible answers. So we can see that negative 3 is less than R. So R is somewhere between the number negative 3 
and then r itself is less than or equal to uh, one half. So one half is something uh, greater than or equal to r. So r is sandwiched in between it. So I'm going to expect that on the graph as well. Now notice the symbol with the negative three is a strictly less than, so I'm expecting an open dot. And the symbol with the one half is a less than or equal to, so I'm expecting a closed dot. And you can see exactly that on this graph here. Open dot at three, color all the space in between because r is somewhere between them, close dot at one half. All right, so definitely I think I've proved nicely that C is one, and you will need this concept of graphing inequalities on a number line. Um, in On the GED, you're supposed to solve them and graph them. It says we'll have problems like that, um, but we're going to get into those in the next few questions of the day. Today, we're just practicing the graphing. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.